hello lovely people welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be showing you step by step how i make a basic bodice pattern using my natalie brie method so i want to say that this method is not very beginner friendly but with time because everybody starts from somewhere so with time you're gonna get it just follow every step by step instruction practice it a few times and it will definitely become easier so let's start this tutorial so for this pattern i'm going to need pattern paper yeah. a curve ruler for the hip curve ruler for the armhole i'm also going to need a pencil a protractor eraser straight rulers a tracing wheel and the calculator for people like me that don't like math <laughs> and lastly you're going to need your measurements and proportion guides which would help in a lot of the planning of the bodies so let's start okay so the first thing i'm going to do is get my top line which will be two inches from the edge of the paper for make sure that for this pattern you have a perfectly squared or rectangular pattern so i'm going to go two inches from the top and then one inch from both sides of the paper so i'm going to do that now so now I've gotten my top line and my side lines. So this side, the right side of the paper is always for the center front and the left side is for the center back. We're going to start with the back. We're going to start with the back. So for the back, I'm going to go down 3.5 centimeters because the measurements I'm using, I'll be using this chart. So the measurement I'm using is a bust 100. My client is actually about 99, but she can go with this measurement. Her hip is 107, not 6. So the difference isn't very much except for the waist where she has about 80 something. So I'm going to be using this measurement on the chart and be using the proportions here too. So because uh, this is on the bigger side, I'm going to be using 3.5 centimeters below my top line for my point O or my center back point O. Any size lower than um, 100, bust 100, or bust 39, you should use a smaller measurement, like 3 centimeters below. But since it's on the bigger side, I'm going to use 3.5 and then trace it about halfway through on the paper. So I'm going to do that now. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to label this point O. Then from point O, I'm going to get my bust line, waist line, and hip line. So my bust line, I'm going to go back to the chart. So I'm going to use depth of shoulder to get my bust line. It says that in the chart, depth of shoulder. So I'm using this size, which is 22.5. So I'm going to go down 22.5 centimeters for my bust line. For my half length or my um, waist line, I'm going to use the chart again. And this is 41 slash 43 for my client she's um 17 inches so which is about 43 centimeters and then my hip line is 21 centimeters below um the waistline so if your client is maybe a bit taller then you probably use 22 centimeters but since she's short i'm going to use 21 centimeters so let's do that now first line is 22 and a half also, I'm going to be extending these lines, the bust line, waistline, and hip line to the center front. So from my center front, I'm going to mark down 3.5 centimeters so that I can get an accurate as possible line to connect. Okay, so I've extended it to the center front. Now from here, I'm going to get my back line. So the back line is halfway through from the top to from point O to bust line. Since our bust line is 22.5, halfway will be 11.25. So I'm going to use 11 centimeters because I don't want decimals. So I'm going to mark 11 centimeters from the top. Uh, 
so for my shoulder line i went down three centimeters from point o uh it's fixed for every size so three ten centimeters below point o not from top line or from point o and then label shoulder line so we're going to take this point o as our neckline for the back so on our neckline i'm going to get my neck width i'll go back to my chart and i can see back neck width and i'm going to trace what i'm using so i'm going to use 7.5 centimeter for my neck width i'm going to measure 7.5 here and then i'm going to go up by two centimeters from that 7.5 to get my neck point which will be labeled np so This is my neck point. Now, on my shoulder line, neck line and back line, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my half across back measurement. So I'm going back to the chart. My across back measurement for here is 38 slash 39. So I already measured my client and she's about 36 um, centimeters. So I'm going to use 38 in this case. So I'm going to use 38 centimeters. So half of it is uh 19. so i'm going to measure 19 centimeters on my shoulder line back line and bust line and really parallel line so so for my bust line i want to get my underarm point because we're going to do the arm hole now i'm going to get my underarm point from the bust line so on this bust line from this our half across back i'm going to measure six centimeters so any measurement that is from let me say that's lower than 100 plus 100 or plus 39 inches you use 5.5 and if it's around plus 84 and below you use five centimeters so from plus 100 above you use um six centimeters so i'm going to add six centimeters to my measurement there and then on my shoulder line i'm going to add two centimeters which is fixed for every uh, measurement so i'm going to add two centimeters here so here i'm going to label my other arm points which is up and then here i'm going to label shoulder point sp also, you can use from the chart. So you can see back on the arm point for mine, I'm going to be using six centimeters. So you can use through this chart. I'm going to put a link to where you can have access to the charts that I use. All right. So using my protractor, using my protractor, I'm going to get a 45 degree angle. On this bus line, I'm going to get 45 degrees. Draw a straight line. And then measure 3 centimeters. Now I'm going to draw the armhole using my armhole curve. I'm going to connect from my underarm point to this 3CM here. I'm going to connect it. Make sure that the line is not too pointy. So let's say I have a flat end from here. Then I connect. Then connect to this um, back line. So make it flat a bit, about 1.5 to 2 centimeters out. I'm going to plug that and then same thing, connect to my 2 centimeters outside, which is my shoulder point. So I'm going to try to do that.
So I'm cutting my armhole. Now I'm going to remove the straight line from my shoulder point to my neck point here. And then a curved line to get my neck um, curve. So I'm going to that's it. So you see we already have our armhole and um, neck curve. Now, now I'm going to get quarter of my hip measurement. So. Uh, for my clients is 107 but on the chart the hip is 106 so that's not much difference i'm going to use the 106 like that so i'm going to get quarter of my hip measurement which is 106 divided by four that is 26.5 centimeters so my hip line i'm going to measure 26.5 centimeters from the center back so i'm going to measure 26 Point five, and mark that point so this will be my hip point I'll leave it out HP that's my hip point so from this hip point now I'm going to draw a straight line to my other hip point And from here, that is on my waist, on my waistline, I'm going to go into centimeters to give it a bit of shaping. And then using my coat, hip coat ruler, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to connect it, so. Then with the other arm point, I'm going to connect again, making sure it looks slopey. So this is it for the back before we get our waist darts and shaping. This is what the back looks like. So now we're going to do the front. So remember that at the back, we went down 3.5 centimeters from the top line. So for the front, we're not going to do that. So our point O starts from the top line. So I'm going to label that point O. It starts from the top line. So from this top line, we're going to get our shoulder line, base of neckline, and our chest line. So our shoulder line, we're going to get it four four centimeters below the top line for smaller measurements you use 4.5 because they have slimmer longer legs so for this i'm going to use four centimeters this is my shoulder line and then i'm going to get my base of neckline which is 7.5 or 8 centimeters because it's any bigger side i'm going to use eight centimeters Still from the top line. If it's for a smaller measurement, you use 7.5 or 7 centimeters, depending on how small your measurement is. So, let's do a really straight line. Go over this. So, I'm going to make all this shoulder line, base of neckline. And then for my chest line, I'm going to go up four centimeters from the bust line. So I'm going to measure four centimeters above. Shoulder line, base of neckline. I will be on because it's too long. And then chest line. 
So on my shoulder line, I'm going to get my, on my base of neckline rather, I'm going to get my neck width, which is the same as the back. So that is 7.5 centimeters. And I'm going to roll a straight line up to the top, top line. So I'm going to get my 7.5 centimeters for the neck width. So here again, I'm going to get my 45 degree angle and measure three centimeters. So this will help me in guide uh, guide me in drawing the neckline, not the sorry the neck curve. So I'm going to connect this to my neck point and then. So I'm going to label here NP as my neck point. So on my shoulder line, I'm going to measure 16.5 centimeters from my center front. So this measurement is fixed for every um, every <laughs> every size. So I'm going to measure 16.5 centimeters here, and I connect it to my neck point. I'm going to extend the line because this is where my shoulder line is going to be. So I'm going to connect them and extend the line a little. So now I'm going to get my quarter chest, across chest measurement again using the chart. This is my chest measurement, so I'm going to use 40 centimeters for the chest measurement. So 40 divided by 4, that's 10. So I'm going to measure 10 centimeters from my bust line all the way to my top line. It's 10 centimeters. So I'm going to, and this bust line, I'm going to go down two centimeters from that um, 10 centimeter, which is my quarter chest measurement. I'm going to go down two centimeters and to run a straight line. I'm going to connect this to the top using broken lines so that I don't get confused when I'm knocking my dot. So I'm going to use broken lines. So from this mark, that's my 10 centimeter, I'm going to go in two centimeters. I'm going down two centimeters. So from here, I'm going to mark two centimeters. Now what this does is uh, to help so that the dot isn't too close to the neckline. So I'm going to run a straight line to the two centimeters below my bust line. Next thing I'm going to do is get the size of my dot. So according to my chart again, you will see dot. So I'm going to trace it to the measurements I'm using and my dot size is 8.5 centimeters. So from this 2 cm that I've marked below, I'm going to measure 8.5 centimeters. five centimeters and then connect it back to this two centimeters below my bust line. Okay. So this is the size of my dot. 
Now, I'm going to complete my shoulder line. That means to get my shoulder, the full length of my shoulder, I'm going to use 12.5 centimeters, which is standard for every size. I'm going to use 12.5 plus 8.5 which is 21 centimeters so from my neck point here i'm going to measure 21 centimeters that means we've added the size of the dot by the time we because dots are going to be taken out so by the time we sew this or cut this out we'll still have our shoulder measurement complete our shoulder seam measurement complete so i'm going to mark 21 centimeters and then label that point shoulder point which is sp So I'm going to go to my chest line now and I'm going to measure half chest measurement, not quarter again. You know, we measure to quarter measurement to get this broken line. So I'm going to measure half chest measurement. So the chest measurement I used is 40. So half of it is 20. I'm going to mark 20 centimeters here, jump into that. So I'm going to measure what I have here, which is 2.2 centimeters. So I'm going to add it to my 20 centimeters, which is 20. 2.2 centimeters and then mark it so another way to do it because we need to get the complete chest half chest measurement without the dot at the end of the day we're gonna remove this dot size so another way to do it is to measure from the dot to here i have 10 and a half centimeters and then continue from my 10 and a half centimeters on the other side to where I have my 20 bases on the same mark line. So I'm going to extend this line down to the bust line. So I'm going to mark 22.2 centimeters and draw a straight line. Where we need to do a bit of calculation. Now, to get our underarm point, or our bust width, we're going to get half bust plus 5 minus, remember that we have our, on this, um, on our back side, we got our um, half across back measurement, which is 19 and six centimeters we added six centimeters to get our underarm point so we're going to minus this whole bust line to underarm point which is 19 plus six centimeters right so minus minus cb to underarm point so our half bust, our bust is 100 centimeters. Our half bust will be 50 centimeters plus, let me put this in a bracket, plus five centimeters minus our CB to underarm point is 19 plus six, which is 25 centimeters. So 25 centimeters. So 50 plus 5 is 55 centimeters minus 25 centimeters, which will give us 30 cm. So our bust width is 30 cm. So please don't be confused. We're just going to minus half bust plus 5 from this total um, bust line at the back. That's basically what we're doing. Half. Okay, so we're going to label this point, this uh, half chest line CP, which is our center chest point. I'm going to label this CP. Now I want to get our bust width on the bust line. That is to get our underarm point. So that's bust plus five minus bust line to underarm point from CB to the underarm point which is 19 plus 6 so we're going to use 30 centimeters to get our our bust width for the front so i'm going to measure 30 
I'm also going to like ignore and um, jump to that. So I'm going to measure 30 centimeters. And then measure the size of my dot here, which is about 2.7. I'm going to add it there. So that point now becomes my underarm point for the front. I'm going to my underarm point for the front. I'm going to root a straight line from my chest and um, shoulder point to chest point. So I'm going to root a straight line. I'm going to measure what I have here. Which is about 14 and a half. So I'm going to get the midpoint. So 14.5 divided by 2. That's 7.25. So I'm going to get 7.25 as my midpoint. I'm going in, uh, let me say, 1.3 centimeters. You can go in one point two or one centimeter depending on you know the size that you're using. Also, on my uh, this chest point, the on the bust line part, I'm going to use my projector to get a forty-five degree angle. In a straight line. I marked zero point uh, one point five centimeters here, not three, one point five. So I'm going to connect from this my underarm point to the one point five centimeter to my chest point to my one point three centimeters that I've marked here, and then to my shoulder point. So I'm going to make that connection now. So, it can be a bit tricky because the other point is so far, but it's not impossible. By the time you are making the clothes, it will make more sense. So, And then at the other arm point, I'm going to let it tip a little, so I'm going to have about, so it goes under a little, and then connect it to my 0 0.5. So that is the armhole for the front. I hope this wasn't confusing. So this is we're almost done. Now we're gonna get our hip quarter hip measurements. Now from the hip line, we're going to do quarter hip measurement plus five centimeters or three centimeters. Now this person's hips aren't very big, so I'm going to use three centimeters. But if you have someone that has bigger hips, you use five centimeters. So my quarter hip measurement is my quarter hip measurement is twenty six point five. So plus three centimeters is twenty nine point five. I'm going to mark twenty nine point five. Then, like I did for the front, I'm going to draw a straight line to the underarm point. So, I'm 
so from um also on my waistline i'm going to go in 1.5 centimeters so i'm going to mark 1.5 centimeters and then connect it to the hip line and the under arm point like i did for the back So now the thing I'm going to do is get my true bust line. So I'm going to mark four centimeters below our bust line. So I'm going to go down four centimeters on this bust line. So now we're going to complete the shoulder line because there's a dot here. By the time you cut off the dart, these places won't match. So what I'm going to do is gonna fold my dart line from the center front. And match it to the other dart line at the other side. So mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? That they don't match. So I'm going to redraw this shoulder line. The first, I'll pin it so that it doesn't move. I remember, you're pulling from the center front towards the center back. I'm going to return the shoulder line to from my neck point to my SP, my shoulder point. So now I'm going to use my tracing wheel to trace from this neck point to where the dots end in. So I'm going to trace that. No, it's not so hard. Open up. So now I can see the real shape of the dot at the top. So I'm going to now trace on the line. So now our shoulder is very much complete. I know it looks very complicated, but with time, it's just going to be so much easier to, you know, to do over and over and over again. So this is what my basic body is looking like without the dart. Now we're going to do the dart. So we're going to get the dart from the front and the, for the back and the front.